Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we have another very special episode. We're going to be talking about the toxic fungus among us. So there are many fungal mycotoxins, and it's worth noting that these mycotoxins can cause significant toxicity as trace contaminants in toxic crops, such as cereals. Cereals just mean like grains, such as wheat, rice, corn, etc. It's also worth noting that it's important for us, but it's also a really important consideration for animals, because sometimes there's stuff that's toxic to animals, uh, but it's not as toxic to us. And so oftentimes there'll be things where a farmer has noticed that several of his uh, flock have gotten sick or died and people have investigated it. And so a lot of the time it comes down to specific mycotoxins um, from fungi that have caused these animals to get sick. So the first one that we're going to talk about is gyromitrin. So gyromitrin is this interesting looking compound here. You can see it's both an imine, but it's also a hydrazine. It's also got a formamide group in it. And interestingly, it's uh, worth noting that these compounds are edible, but they have to be, or these mushrooms rather are edible, but they have to be prepared carefully. And so it turns out that this mushroom isn't actually a mushroom, it's a fungus, but it's either a choice or a deadly fungus. And so because this has hydrazine derivatives in it, um, it's possible that during the uh, cooking process, this can get converted into monomethyl hydrazine. And we're going to talk about that on the next slide. So here you can see this is a, a market stand where people are selling it, but it's very clear that you're not supposed to touch it. Why? Because methyl hydrazine is very toxic and corrosive and you have to be careful. So it's worth noting that acute poisoning is the main concern here. Uh, here's a quote. Symptoms observed were mainly gastrointestinal and neurological including symptoms such as vertigo, fatigue, tremor, ataxia, and nystagmus. Uh, however, there's like more severe effects as the dosages of this get higher. It's also worth noting that gyromitrin is also a carcinogen. And so when this is in the presence of water, it can actually hydrolyze. It's known that um, it's possible to screw up GABA synthesis and then end up causing issues such as glutathione depletion, uh, as well as damaging uh, to the to the liver. So it's worth noting that these are definitely something you have to be careful about. So here you can see the mechanism. Water just first hydrolyzes off this acetyl group. This imine is cleaved. We then have this hydrazine, which is still a formamide. And then through a subsequent hydrolysis reaction, we were able to form methyl hydrazine. And uh, I would like to nominate methyl hydrazine as being one of the worst compounds in existence. As you can see from its NFPA safety diamond, it's got a four, a four, and a four, which is the worst in all three categories. So this is one terrifying compound. However, if you apparently you cook and prepare this properly, it's safe to eat. It's worth noting that um, when you're preparing this, washing and cooking it, the water must totally be discarded and you should not save it whatsoever. And sometimes in some preparations, they'll do several different um, washes or boiling steps just to really get rid of all of that. So, you know, I wouldn't take a risk with this. Uh, maybe okay tasting mushroom versus death. You decide. You know, I know how I would decide. So the next compound is Lulatrem B. And it's worth noting in this one that perennial ryegrass can be infected with this very specific fungus. So here we can see this is a, this is a scanning electron microscope image of the fungus. This is the structure of the of the compound at hand. And you can see this has got a quite complicated motif where we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rings. Ten rings in one molecule is quite impressive. And so normally the poisoning that occurs is in grazing animals and the toxicity occurs through the BK channel inhibition. And so BK just stands for big potassium, which I thought was a pretty funny name. And uh, at low doses, the animals that consume this have tremors and at higher doses, they stagger. And at even higher doses, the animals become paralyzed and die. And it's also worth noting, in addition to death, the blood pressure goes up, which I thought was a little bit entertaining. So the next compound we're going to talk about is satrotoxin H. So here we have these interesting looking uh, nature's pool noodles. I think these are quite entertaining. There's several interesting mycotoxins that these fungi uh, contain, but the one that we're going to be talking about briefly is just satrotoxin H. And so this is found in Potostroma cordidemi, which is what we've shown here, uh, but it also occurs in black mold. And so it's, it's thought that a lot of the poisoning that occurs from black mold is due to the presence of satrotoxin H. So this is a good reminder, if you uh, think you have any black mold in your house, this is your chance to go and deal with it right now. And if you're not sure how to deal with it, get an expert, because you're getting exposed to it regardless of if you deal with it. 
So this causes uh, this interesting condition that I'm not going to try and say. And I couldn't find great uh, literature on the effects of exposure other than it's bad and it's cytotoxic. I mean, the name tells you that it's a toxin. And uh, it was they, there were some listed symptoms on Wikipedia, but I couldn't find good references to back this up other than just some like MSDS sheets and whatever. And it claims that you could get a rash, nosebleeds, chest pain, pulmonary hemorrhaging, which just means like you're bleeding in your lungs fever, headache, and fatigue. And so this compound's definitely no joke, and it definitely has an interesting looking structure. Here you can see it's got a couple tetrahydropyran rings, as well as this cyclohexene, as well as uh, a couple macrolactone linkages. Here we have a lactone, and we also have another lactone here. And finally, it's kind of hard to see, but we have a little uh, epoxide right here, just for that added toxicity. Thanks, Satrotoxin AH. So now the next one is Fusarin C. And so here we can see we have a picture of the fungus that this comes from, Fusarium uh, verticilliotis. I apologize if I butchered that. There's a couple other members in the Fusarin family, except it seems that Fusarin C is the most uh, toxic one that's most noteworthy. This can infect crops such as wheat, barley, oats, rye, and corn, although there are other ones it can affect as well. And it's highly mutagenic, and so this just causes DNA issues. Now the next compound is vomitoxin, and I really like the name of vomitoxin. Uh, it's got a got a real ring to it. So it's interesting to note that the mycotoxin is found in Fusarium graminearium, and uh, this can also infect many uh, grain crops, which is kind of the theme for a lot of these. And so it's known as vomitoxin because when pigs eat stuff contaminated with this, the pigs barf, which is pretty funny. Some other animals that can't barf uh, have been studied as well. And it just generally makes the animals not want to eat stuff, and it can also give them diarrhea. There's just like a lot of bad stuff that'll happen if they eat it. Basically, they'll want to eat less, and if they do eat, it's going to come out at one end or the other. And they believe that this has to do with uh, the interference of the ability to take up tryptophan, and then subsequently causes a decrease in uh, serotonin synthesis in the brain. So it's interesting compound. Now, the next one is ergotamine. Now, you might be familiar with ergotamine because ergot poisoning has been uh, something that humanity is familiar with for quite a long time. So here we can see uh, ryegrass, which is contaminated with uh, ergot. It's worth noting that ergotamine is an agonist of several 5-HT receptors. It's fairly non-selective, so it targets many of them. And when you're poisoned by ergot, it's called ergotism. Now, when ergot poisoning occurs, it's not a great thing. There's a lot of different stuff that can happen depending on dose. Um, although, despite the fact that it could be a poison, it's also still used for clinical applications, including migraines, cluster headaches, and it also used to be used as a way to induce birth if, if childbirth was uh, not occurring. So it's an interesting compound. If we look at its structure, we can see we've got an indole. We have this whole core, which is called an ergoline core. Um, but then we also have this interesting amide linkage, which is kind of interesting. We have this like it's almost like an orthoester, except it's got both a nitrogen and a free hydroxy group, as well as several amide groups. So quite an interesting motif. Now, diplonine is the next one we're going to talk about, and this is found in Stenocarpella mitis. And we can see a microscope image of that here. This is an interesting looking molecule because it's got yet another cyclopropane. If you haven't seen the last episode on mushroom mycotoxins, I'll put a link to that here, and I'd encourage you to go check it out. This mycotoxin is a neurotoxin, which means a lot of bad stuff happens. It causes a disease in cattle known as diplediosis, and some of the symptoms include ataxia, paresthesis, um, paralysis, and uh, depending on the level, a lot of other bad stuff can happen. The, it's also worth noting that if a pregnant animal consumes this, it will cause stillbirths, and also it'll like screw up the brain of the unborn babies. So not great. Uh, in this specific paper, they study the effect on guinea pigs, uh, as opposed to like the typical uh, cattle that one might raise. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is citronin. So citronin is another interesting motif. Here we have this um, interesting looking motif where we have alpha beta unsaturation as well as um, gamma delta unsaturation, uh, in addition to this oxygen in this six-membered ring. There's a bit of chirality to it, carboxylic acid, and this is found in penicillium citrinum. Or, or it was originally uh, identified from that species, rather. This is also something that occurs as a trace contaminant in many staple grains. It has acute toxicity, nephrotoxicity, which just means that it's bad for your kidneys, and it's also carcinogenic. Now, the, the next one we're going to talk about is gliotoxin. Gliotoxin is a really interesting looking one, in my opinion, because while we both uh, have these two amide groups, we also have a disulfide linker and a de-aromatized benzene ring. So quite an interesting motif, definitely one of the cooler looking one, ones in today's episode. And uh, this was originally isolated from Fusarium verticillio disease. 
Uh, however, this is uh, previously under a different name prior to the reassignment of fungal nomenclature. And this gliotoxin acts as an immunosuppressant. And so the issue with this is it'll just cause immune cells to die, undergo apoptosis. And it's known that exposure to immunosuppressants can lead to tumor formation through the suppression of immune cells. So we sometimes just make tumor cells just being a living being. And so our immune system is able to pick some of those up and stop them before they get too bad. So another reason why you might want to avoid this is it could lead to tumor formation indirectly by suppressing the immune system, which is kind of an interesting tumor forming mechanism. Now, the last one that we're going to talk about today is moniform moniliformin. And moniliformin is one of the coolest looking ones. We also talked about this one in our cursed molecules tier list. If you haven't checked out that video, I'll include a link to it here. And this can contaminate several different cereal crops. It's most noteworthy because it's cardiotoxic and it also causes a thickening of the ventricle uh, walls in the heart. So this is not great. It can also uh, be really toxic for rats, mice, mink, and birds, and it can be lethal for many of these. So like I was saying earlier, it can be toxic for us, but oftentimes it can negatively impact other animals more than us. And especially if you're raising these uh, as like a food source or as just like a pet or whatever, uh, it could definitely be a concern if it was a possible contaminant. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode about fungal mycotoxins. It would really help out the channel if you left a like and subscribed. And I hope you have a great day.